Now, when we look at it from the perspective of the nervous system, resilience is the ability to upregulate, to meet a stress or a challenge, then this ability to endure that challenge, and most importantly, for the nervous system to be able to downregulate down completely back to a calm, relaxed state afterwards. This is what resilience is, the ability to bend and then come back to where you were. We know in PTSD, something goes wrong with a stop process, which can leave the person in a permanent distressing state of hyperarousal, even when no perceived threat is present. Now, what this means is we get an incomplete downregulation of the body. And this is of the nervous system. It's not a psychological thing because everybody knows the trauma was back there, the accident was back there, whatever happened was back there, but the physiology of the body is still acting as if that hasn't yet finished. Now, when we look at this process from the neuromuscular perspective, first of all, we can see, and this is based on Stephen Porges' polyvagal theory, First of all, we see is that our stress and trauma responses are primarily about movement, either the creation of movement in a mobilization state or the containment of movement in an immobilization state. Now, it doesn't matter whether, we're, whether our mobilization response is due to stress or trained hypervigilance, what we need to be able to do is to calm right back down afterwards. Perhaps more importantly, we've got to recognise that immobilisation is not just about freeze and in extreme trauma, but this occurs every time we contain our body's impulse to move. So this means it's a skill we can train ourselves to ignore or override our body's impulse to run away from danger or to contain the urge to punch someone or shoot someone who's being aggressive towards us. What we lose, though, is the ability to then downregulate the other side. Now, we know that this stress and trauma response is not a conscious process. We're not choosing to upregulate the nervous system. So doesn't it make sense that the human body would have evolved with this, these you know, sub, subcortical reflexes to go into our stress and trauma responses in the physiology of the body, that we would have also evolved with reflexes or similar subconscious processes to come out of it? And this is what we're talking about today, is the body has. And this is this reflex, for want of a better word, of spontaneous involuntary movement, primarily shakes and tremors. And what these movements do is they're releasing the immobility response, the containment of movement. They're dumping adrenaline, releasing the muscular bracing of tension, restoring movement both physically in the body through the space, but also, just as importantly, restoring movement through the autonomic nervous system and remodulating the autonomic nervous system. The shaking and tremoring down regulates the nervous system and restores us back to calm. So shaking and tremoring is not a part of being in shock. It's how the body comes out of shock. It's not a part of being frightened or anxious. It's how the body recovers from being frightened and anxious. But unfortunately in our Western medical model in the DSM-5, shaking and tremoring, while well recognized to be associated with a lot of quote mental health disorders, is actually pathologized as a symptom. We tell people that when you start to shake uncontrollably, you're having a panic attack rather than a panic discharge. Now again, what this looks like from the neuromuscular system is rather than us allowing this natural recovery response to occur, because it's about spontaneous movement, we end up with muscular tension and bracing that prevents the discharge and the movements of arousal that would take us back to a calm, regular, calm uh, relaxed state. Both physical movements to restore muscular movement, but also more importantly, arousal in the autonomic nervous system, which again is a seen as a symptom of PTSD. Now, because we have that buildup of internal tension and pressure, basically stress and tension in the body, we then end up with substance abuse and behaviors that keep us numb and dis disconnected from our body. Okay, And this cycling between numbness and depression and anger and anxiety because we're not able to complete the discharge is the very defini definition of PTSD. And it's also the same process that eventually leads to burnout. Now, just to acknowledge, TRE is not a panacea for everything that's going on, but it does have a huge potential role to play. We still need to have clinical staff and all those other non-clinical things that we're doing to support Stuff. It's not about replacing it, it's not about competing it because it will intend to enhance and support those other techniques. But in terms of a, in terms of a self-management technique 
as an early intervention strategy, as a preventative strategy, and more importantly, as a resilience, well-being, and performance enhancing strategy, there really is anything else like it. There really isn't anything else like it at the moment. Thanks for